What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. I've always wanted to make a candy dispenser, so I jumped in Fusion 360, came up with a model that I think works well for me, and that's what we're gonna make today. Now the heart and soul of this is gonna be the mechanism that spins that allows all the candy to fall down the chute. And that's really a circle with another circle carved inside of it, and then that sits inside of a housing. So to start this project off, let's make a circle. I got my wheel and it has this cut out to hold all of our delicious candies. Now I need to put this into this. So I put a template on my block. I need to drill this big circle out and I could do this over at the CNC, but I, I have this, this big boy and uh, I get to use it. I get to use it. Okay, I turned the camera off because it was probably getting boring. <laughs> and as soon as I did, went back, turned the drill press on. When I hit the button, the steel on my drill bit broke. This was really thick steel, really thick steel. Cracked the bit, flew across the shop. Um, I got banged up a bit, nothing that Band-Aids can't fix. So I'm okay. The workpiece is not okay. That went another direction. Uh, it's pretty crazy that that much steel simply snapped off. And I've used this bit before, never had a problem with it, but I will admit it's uh, kind of an Amazon special. It's not super good quality, and I guess you kind of get what you pay for. So, uh, yeah. Mechanism looks pretty good. So now I need to make a carcass for this to sit inside of, which means milling some lumber. I let my work pieces acclimate overnight, came back today, remilled them down to about a half inch thick. So now it's time for the joinery so we could put together our candy dispenser. And I'm thinking rabbit joints. I need to transfer the rectangle that's in our mechanism to the front of our box. So I went ahead and drew out the square here. Now I need to cut that out. And it's not very thick, so I'm gonna try the scroll saw. I applied a little bit of tried and true to my circle because, well, I can't apply finish after it's already assembled. And now it's time to figure out how to make a handle. Now I did find this really cool piece of aluminum here and it's calling out to me and saying, make something from me. So this is what I'm thinking. Drill out a pretty good size hole in a piece of walnut and then go over to the router table and route out a channel. Now I have to take a couple passes with this just because I don't want to put too much pressure on that router bit and then a little bit of cleanup work with some chisels to square things off. My aluminum should be able to fit into place. Then I'll cut down the handle to its final size, glue the aluminum into the channel, and I think we're gonna have a pretty good looking handle. We can't have a candy dispenser and not be able to see the candy. So the next step is to go over to the scroll saw and cut out a big rectangle in our front panel. Now I'll have to go over to the router table and route out a rabbit around the back side of that so that way we can put a piece of acrylic into place. 
Now I'll probably just use a little bit of adhesive so it stays where it needs to be. And then you've got this big window in there so that you can see all that delicious candy goodness that will quickly be consumed. Finally, we can see what our candy dispenser is going to look like. Pretty cool. I like it. Now, we got to come up with a lid up here because we don't want our candy just exposed. So what I'm thinking is a sliding lid. So I'm going to route out a channel on the sides here. I'll take the back and cut it a little bit shorter. That way I can have a lid that slides in grooves and I can pull it out, dump candy in there, pull it back. Or pull it out, grab a scoopful, eat it. Put it back, either way. I need to give a big thank you to the members of our superhero community over on Patreon. We've got a couple of new members, Carlos Pacheco, Ted Lucero, thank you so much for all of your support. If you're interested in getting some extra videos, some behind the scenes, know what I'm doing in the shop before I tell anyone else, head on over to patreon.com slash newtonmix and sign up. We have us a glorious candy hoarder, but now I gotta figure out a way to get the candy to funnel to that wheel. And to do that, I'm gonna make a bunch of wedges. So first, those wedges need to sit on top of something. So I'm gonna take some scrap pieces of walnut, glue those into the inside faces of the walls, and then the wedges can sit on top of those. And then you put the candy in there, gravity does its thing, and it runs down the wedge into the wheel. So, I need to glue these in there, and then we're gonna get kind of crazy with some angles. I don't want to dig into the opening to get the candy out. I want it to flow out. So I cut a wedge over the miter saw, trim it down to final size, and glued that into the opening. Now, any candy that you tumble down is going to hit that wedge and flow right into my hand. Now, the final step is to cover up this bottom here. So I sanded it smooth, and then I cut this. This is a piece of walnut peel and stick veneer. I'm going to stick that on there, trim off the excess just with a razor blade, do a little bit of fine touching with some sandpaper, then we can finally apply finish. The moment's finally arrived, we can apply finish. I'm gonna do some tried and true because, well, it's food safe and also it looks cool. While I'm applying finish to this, I guess I can answer a couple questions that may come up. One question I can see people asking is, why did I make it this style? Well, I did some research online to find some candy holders because I figure why reinvent the wheel? And the vast majority of them just weren't the style I was looking for. I wasn't looking for the glass jar style. I wanted something a little bit more modern. So ultimately I had to come up with my own design. I do like the other ones and I can see there's a lot of effort put into them. So I can appreciate the craftsmanship. They just weren't my style aesthetically. I posted some pictures on social media and got a couple questions about why did I make it this tall? Cause this is about 13 and a half inches tall. And that's because I wanted the chute to be a certain height. So they had plenty of room for the candy to fall down. And then after that, just kind of guessed what would look good. So yeah, it holds a lot of candy, definitely. If you wanted to make something like this, but not have it as big, then I would probably stick with the same height, maybe just make it a little bit narrower and it would accomplish the same thing. One of the more important questions is what kind of candy is going to go inside of it? Well, the way it's made, you can put all kinds of different sizes of candy in there. I tried them out. They all seem to, to work fairly well. 
I would prefer regular M&Ms, but I'm in the minority. In my household, they prefer the caramel M&Ms, which are bigger. Either size work, so, you know, we'll see uh, what ends up in this ultimately. And we all know it won't be my decision. I'm gonna finish this coat, wait a while, come back, wipe off all of the excess, and then let it sit overnight. Come back the next day, then I'll apply a second coat, and then we'll see if it needs a third coat. I don't know, depends on the looks of it. Well, good. Well, that worked pretty well. I think this turned out really cool. And this is a project I've wanted to make for a long time. And I held off for no particular reason, but I'm really glad I was able to set aside some time, get this thing done. I think it looks cool. And I don't think this can is gonna last very long. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel and tweet me again, get in your shop and build something awesome.